Well, good day to you. And we're continuing our series in Game Maker, our how to series on player movement. And today we are going to add a jump to our left and right movement, which most of you will be looking to do. So, looking at what we've got so far, we've got a player represented by a red block on the screen that can move left when you press the left arrow key and right when you press the right arrow key that's it and looking at the code by the side we when we press a key we do a keyboard check to see if we're pressing it and we get a one or zero in move horizontal depending on whether we pressed it or not then we set X speed in all of this bit of code here. Once we've got a value for X speed, we add it to the X coordinate and we move the player accordingly. And we run this code 60 times a second so that obviously it moves a lot quicker than just if we'd done it once which would move just a couple of pixels and that is all in the step event now we have generalized the movement of a player or an object if you like in the step event to this diagram here which shows the the general things that we would do to get a player moving in the step event first of all we would look at the keyboard input and see what keys are being pressed. Once we have that, we would set the X speed and the Y speed or the horizontal speed and the vertical speed, which means we'd get a value for X speed and a value for Y speed. And then we would add that value to the X coordinate and the Y coordinate respectively to move the player on the screen and that process would take place at the frame rate i.e. 60 frames per second to give you your player movement now today we are going to add in jump code which means as well as being able to do this you can jump up and down which I haven't added yet so I can't show you but You'll also note that we need a floor <clears throat> because adding jump movement means moving the player in the Y direction like this. So you're moving it, jumping up to a point, slowing down to zero, and then increasing your speed in this direction, back down to earth again. That means we need to take account of collisions and we need to collide with a floor or floor block, a floor sprite, floor object, if you will. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add in the floor. Now you will be very used to adding in sprites, assigning them to objects, so we want you to create a single block, same size as a player, minus 32 by 32, and make it a bit transparent then create an associated object and then we're going to drag this on and create a floor. So click your instances layer in the room, click the wall object, hold down the alt key and you should see the object appear and then just create a floor like this. That's it, done. Okay, first bit done. The next bit involves doing some code, but before we actually get on with the code that we're going to write, we are actually going to tidy up what we've already done. So you should have something like, something like this. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger, actually. It's a bit bigger there. You have something like this, so it involves getting keyboard input, 
setting x speed, resetting it to zero, and then setting it to the walk speed or minus the walk speed, and then adding that to the x coordinate. Now we're going to tidy this up, and this bit of this 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 exercise is called refactoring, and that's and that means making your code a little better and more readable, a um, little bit more effective, efficient than what you've got already. So we're actually going to delete all of this apart from the keyboard check and the, the last line where we set the X coordinate. So we're going to delete all of it and we're going to put in a line that represents all of that in one line of code. And that will be X speed, oops, X speed equals move horizontal multiplied by walk speed now you'll see very quickly that if move horizontal is zero zero times the walk speed which is i've forgotten let's have a look five zero times five equals zero so if move horizontal is zero i.e we are not moving the player, x speed will be zero. If move horizontal is one, i.e. we are moving right, then x speed will be one times the walk speed, which is five, so x speed will be five. If move horizontal is minus one, i.e. we are moving left, x speed will be minus one times five equals minus five x speed will be minus 5. Therefore we can set x speed in one single line and then add x speed to the x coordinate to move it 0 or 5 or minus 5 pixels in one single step or frame of animation. That's much better hey than what we had before. So we're going to move on with that now Obviously, jump involves Y speed, really. X speed is kind of irrelevant to jump. Um, so what we've got here is perfect for our X speed. We just need to add in the stuff for Y speed. So we've added in our floor. What we need to do next is add in a variable for jump speed. So this is how much or how many pixels effectively we are going to jump by in one frame when we first press the jump key. And we're going to have that at, doesn't really matter, it could be anything. So let's say minus 10. Why minus? Because jumping is in the up direction uh, and zero the zero coordinate is top left okay so if you're going up you're going towards zero from where you are so we need that's a negative negative direction okay. so jump speed is minus 10 now we also need a keyboard check for the key, so we're going to have the space key as our our jump key. So we just need to do keyboard check, not keyboard check, but keyboard check pressed. The difference between keyboard check and keyboard check pressed, I'm glad you asked, is that keyboard check, which we're using here, means we can hold down the key and um, the, the step event will just keep on seeing that, uh, or this code will keep on seeing that you, you're still holding down a key, so move horizontal is still one. So it keeps checking for whether the key's held down. But keyboard check press checks if it's been pressed once. Well, pressed means you've pushed it down and up. That's a press. 
and not whether you're holding it down. So this is just checking whether you press jump, press the space key once for one jump. Okay, so we have to put in the space key. Okay, so now it's checking for the space key. So like before, if you pressed it, jump will be one. If you haven't pressed it, jump will be zero. So the next thing we need to do is add the force of gravity to the Y speed. So Y speed, if you can imagine, gravity is always acting on a body in real life to bring it down to Earth. If, if gravity didn't act on you, you'd float away. So gravity is always acting on you. So we need to um, make, make gravity act on this player, which means adding gravity to Y speed every single frame. In other words, pushing it down which means that if there was no floor, the player would just literally go down and disappear off the screen and keep going down forever. But we're going to put, because we've got a floor in, we're going to have a collision check to make sure when it hits the floor, it doesn't keep going on even though gravity is still acting on it. So in order to do that, to add gravity, we just literally add it. Ah, and that leads me to think that I didn't create a gravity variable, did I? So I'm going to do that, call it GRV, make it 0.3, because we're adding this every frame. It's going to have to be a small value. Okay, so Y speed, otherwise it will seem like it's really heavy gravity. So Y speed equals Y speed plus GRV. So let's say as a comment, add force of gravity to y uh, direction. Now the next thing we need to do is check um, whether or not we've pressed the key, not, well we've already kind of done that in jump, we've got to say if we have pressed, if we have pressed the key um, and we're on the ground, then effectively jump because we, we're not going to allow we're not going to allow the player to jump unless he or she is on the ground. So I'm going to say if jump so if jump is one, then this will be true. If jump is zero, this will be false. This if statement. So if jump and uh, place meeting x y plus one watch wall then y speed equals y speed plus jump speed so what does that mean so it's saying if jump has been pressed, that is in jump is one, because zero kind of equates to false in computing coding, and one tends to equate to true. So if jump and place meeting, now place meeting you've come across that a fair few times, we are just checking whether there has been a collision between the wall and this object, as in the player. And the collision point we're checking is the player's coordinates, x and y plus 1. So y plus 1 would be the bottom of the player, um, plus 1, plus 1. So if the floor is one more pixel, down, then you've effectively collided. Okay. Now if they have collided, then we add jump speed to Y speed. And that will move the player up by this check. 10 pixels 
and we have effectively worked out y speed. The final thing we need to do is check for a collision with ground. Okay, we've already checked whether they're on the floor here. If if place meeting, if that's true, then they're on the ground and we can jump. But we also need to check for when there is a collision because when you jump, you'll go up in the air and you'll come down. At some point, you'll hit the ground. So we need some code to check, keep on checking when that happens. And that's very similar to what we had before with the place meeting code. So I will probably paste it all in here and then explain it. Okay, so this is similar. If place meeting x x plus y speed x y plus x y speed object ball so that's checking whether y plus um, whatever y speed is uh, could be going up could be going down because this could check whether there's something above you as in a wall above you or platform above you and it will stop if there is as well so this is because y speed could be negative right so if that collision is happening, then what this while code does, effectively it checks again whether we're going to collide with the wall in one pixel. And if, we are, if we're not, we move it nearer the wall by one pixel, which is basically gives you precision, pixel precision perfect collisions it moves the player up or down to the wall by one, one pixel when it's in range of y speed. Once it's moved it, it sets y speed to zero. Okay. And then you're not going to get a collision, so it's going to drop out this code. Now, if that's very hard to understand, you can work through it line by line. Um, but don't worry if it's hard to understand at this, this point. This is one of the hardest pieces of code, probably, that you'll have in your game. But once we've worked out Y speed, which is that second step or second process, remember the first process was getting input, getting keyboard input. The second process is getting a value for X speed and Y speed. And the third process is adding to x and y x speed and y speed so we've done it x speed let's do y speed add y speed here and that should give us jumping capabilities so let's test it out see what happens uh, we do need to yeah, we've moved that into the room. So let's check it out. Okay, so it's landed on the, the floor. So if I press space, there we get jumps. I can still move left and right. If I move and jump, then it does that until I take the finger off. The left and right key. And if I move off the floor, because it's adding gravity all the time, why the Y coordinate just keeps increasing. Okay, so that's jump. 